Hi, I'm Thomas and welcome to this Victor video in which I will show you how you can turn your script or workbook into a useful web application. That way, anyone can use your calculations without needing to know any Python. If this is your first time turning a script into an app, I recommend that you start with a simple script first. That way, you give yourself all the space you need to learn the process first. I've seen way too many people start with complicated projects and that's not a fun nor efficient way to learn. So trust me, don't do it. Let's jump into the script that I'll be using for this example. The script has four variables, a for loop, and it generates a plotly figure. And yes, it is a very simple script, but it will help us understand the basic process. Every project starts with a good plan. So before we start coding our application, we will make the design. We can keep this very simple and just write some things down. First, I will write down the packages that I'm using because we will need this information later. As you can see at the top of my script, I'm using NumPy and Plotly. Then we need to decide which variables the user can change. My inputs will be these four numbers. Now let's go to the documentation and decide which input field we need. In my case, I want the user to be able to change numbers, so naturally I will use the number field. Next, let's do the same for the results. Here you can see all the views that you can use for your application. Open a few, take a good look at the docs, because there are probably some options that you have not thought of yet. In my case, I want to show a graph made with Plotly, so I can use the Plotly view. If you are not sure which inputs or outputs to use, don't worry. The first version of your app does not need to be perfect. The only way to make really good apps is by asking feedback. Yes, feedback is so important. I cannot stress this enough. So don't get stuck on the first app. Make a prototype really fast, publish it and share it. That way you can improve it later. Then you can also repeat this process, ask for feedback again, and you'll have an awesome application in no time. Now that we have an idea of what our app is going to look like, let's create an empty app template, which we will use to make our application. You can start by making a code space repository or a new app folder in your Victor apps. Then you can make the necessary app files using the Victor CLI command. Now let's add the packages that we need. In my case, it was Plotly and NumPy. I will add these to my requirements file to make sure that the dependencies of the app will be installed correctly. Then we can go ahead and Victor CLI clean start the app. This will prepare our environment and we can open the development workspace once we see that the app is ready. Here we will be able to see all the changes as we update our app. Now we will start building our app's interface. We can do this in two ways, by using our app builder or by coding it ourselves. I recommend to try out the no code template builder that you can find in the Victor Labs. This application helps us make the interface and visualize it before we even have to start coding. Optionally, you can add pages, steps, tabs, and sections too. Based on my design, I will just add four number fields. I will leave them empty for now because we are only trying to get an idea of what our app will look like. Finally, I will add the Plotly view too. And this is roughly what our app will look like once it's finished. If you would like, you can generate and copy the code for this. That way, a lot of the coding has already been done for you. I will quickly show you what the result is of the no-code app builder in the development workspace. First, I will paste the blueprint from before into app.py, save it, and go to the workspace. When I refresh the page, you can see I have those four number fields and my Plotly graph. Pretty cool, right? Of course, you can also create the exact same code yourself. And let's do this together, as then I can also explain some concepts in the meantime. First, let's start by importing our packages. I can copy and paste them from the script. Then we will look at our app design and import the input fields from Victor to parameterization. For me, that is the Victor number field. 
then let's take the variables that we will use as inputs and add them to the parameterization by giving them a recognizable name and editing the field such that they also have the default. I can easily use the same names from my script and I will give each one the value in the script as the default. If you like, you can also define a minimum, a maximum and other settings for each field. To make sure we did it correctly, let's go to the workspace and see what it looks like. As you can tell, the input fields appear, there is no controller or output yet and we have all the defaults in there. The simplest way to convert the script is to turn it into a single function. And of course, that depends a little bit on the output. First, I will make sure to import the plotly view and the plotly result from victor.views. And then in the controller class, I will use the plotly view decorator with a title and a duration guess so Victor knows what I want to display in my application. Then we make a function for the view with the inputs self, params and the quarks. Then I will take all the code except the imports and fig.show and then paste it into this function. For my return statement, I will use the plotly result and return this figure as a JSON. Then let's save the app and let's go back to the development workspace and refresh the page. As you can see, the graph has appeared. Great! However, if I change some of the parameters right now, nothing will happen to the graph. Let's go back to the code editor and connect the parameters to this function. To connect the parameters from the parameterization to the controller, I will use the following notation. I begin by writing params dot and then the parameter name. Whenever you want to use a parameter in a function in the controller class, make sure to use this notation. Now let's go back to develop workspace and test to see if we connected the inputs. And as you can see, they are working. If you are using your own script, which may be a bit more complicated, always give it a test case to verify the result. And if everything looks good, we can move on to the final step. The last thing you want to do is to publish and share your application. That way you can gather feedback and improve the app. To publish and share your app, you can watch our in-depth video or read the documentation on how to do so. And that's it. Now you know how you can turn any Python script into a useful web application. The three most important things that I want you to take away from this video are that you need to design your application, that you can use the no-code builder or choose to code everything yourself using our documentation, and that feedback is your most valuable tool. Thank you for watching, and remember to automate the boring and engineer the awesome.